Hey guys, and welcome back to the Physique Development Podcast. Today we have on a special guest, which is Coach Katie. And if you didn't know, Coach Katie is very impressive in general. She not only has competed in figure, she is one jacked MFR. Um, she also is perinatal certified through ACE as well as through Go- Girls Gone Strong. So she has multiple perinatal certifications as well as her CPT. And then she also has a nutrition certification through ISSA. And she just recently got recertified for her um, CPR. So she's good to go on that side as well. Um, but what else did I miss on you, Katie? Tell us a little bit about yourself and just becoming a mom as well. Man, what a time. So I'm so excited to be here, first of all, in just the last year and a half has been a whirlwind. Um, I had a daughter, she's about 16 months, and it has been just quite the first of all, lifestyle change, but then also just jumping into a new role as a mom, figuring out how things work, how I'm supposed to, quite frankly, keep this little human alive, Mm -hmm. but then also pry towards myself while also coaching and then making fitness a huge priority too. Um, There's been a lot of hurdles, but I think that's what we're here to discuss a little bit. A hundred percent. And I love that you phrased it that way because I think that a lot of times moms end up feeling like I just have to know it all. I have to have it all fixed figured out. And I think that you are a really great example of someone who didn't know what to expect going into it, but someone who's really had grace with themselves of figuring it out along the way to really be able to provide for a human being as well as for yourself and then showing up in other aspects of your life. So if you can talk us through just a little bit of what it looked like from when you first found out you were pregnant to now you're like, oh my gosh, I have this human to take care of and what do I do now that I'm pregnant? or directly postpartum? So taking it back to the first time I found out I was pregnant, I'm pretty sure, well, at least you guys know, (laughs) Alex was one of the first people to know because he was coaching (laughs) me through my reverse diet. I remember telling him, like, I feel like I got hit by a bus like week after week. And then we're like, oh, okay, you're pregnant. That's why. (laughs) So finding out that at first I was like, oh, shit. I mean, I was excited, but coming from the background of quite frankly, fitness is life. I mean, everything I did revolved around macros and training and how my physique looked, especially being a competitor and then transitioning to, okay, now I'm building a human instead of like bodybuilding. And I need to prioritize so many different things and being able to take care of myself in a totally different way without being fully focused on my physique. And that's something that once I got the hang of while pregnancy, it really transpired into even now. Um, and I'm sure we'll go over that a little bit more, but it's been so nice to almost let go of even I would say the person I was pre-pregnancy and transitioning into, I would say who I am now is just been insane, <laughs> insane, to say the least. It's been really special to watch just you come into your role as a mom as well as your role as a working mom because that's, like you said, a lot of hurdles to overcome. So when you are transitioning and going through the time of pregnancy and really trying to figure out how you could show up for yourself, what were some of the things that you did while you were pregnant that you said that now even 16 months postpartum, you are still taking some of those lessons forward? So through pregnancy, I would always just prioritize movement, listening to my body, and then nutrient-dense foods. And those are just the three main pillars that I also talk to my clients about who are pregnant and postpartum. And those are the three things that I really try to prioritize now. It's not more focused on like getting to the gym X amount of days per week or like hitting a PR each session or whatever it may have been before pregnancy. Because during pregnancy, it was like, okay, I need to move my body because I can't just be like a lethargic slug. I will feel worse. (laughs) And I need to make sure I'm still eating good, not eating like an asshole. Like if you're my client, you know, you don't (laughs) eat like assholes because you feel like crap. Um, And then just like I said, getting activity in and prioritizing just not minimal things, but some things that in comparison to like being a competitor are just like, oh, duh, like you'll eat good or you'll move your body or whatever. But being so focused on something else, those things are so important that I almost kind of let go of when I was a competitor because I was just more so focused on a ton of other things. And those three main pillars kind of just happen naturally. Um, but as I make the shift through pregnancy with other focuses, as I made this shift through postpartum with 
obviously a lot of other focuses, those three things can almost like slip away. So if you don't keep them in the front of your brain to like, hey, drink water, hey, eat some veggies, or like, hey, move your body today, it's really easy to not do that. So that's been something that has been huge, I think. Yeah. And they exactly that of they're not easy, but they are simple things to do. And really being able to keep them in the front of your mind instead of letting them fall by the wayside, thinking that they're not as important because they might be more simple tasks. So they might not feel like, oh, I really need to nail those down or I need to focus on those. And now it's something where you're like, I do need to focus on those. I do need to nail those down. Um, So how do you mentally work through that when it comes to like, these are now things that I have to focus on. And these are going to move the needle forward, Um, especially, like you said, from that competitor past, or even if you're just someone who has been really into fitness in the past, maybe you haven't been a competitor, but you've just been very physique focused, very aesthetic focused, then shifting to this, oh, these three pillars are now my main pillars. How did that shift happen? And how did you continue to remind yourself that those were important? Because I know that what I've heard about pregnancy, I know that I've never personally been pregnant. Pregnant, but I have heard a lot of people kind of give, I don't want to say excuses because I don't think that they're always excuses, but they kind of say like, well, I'm pregnant. So like, I just want to do this or like, I should be able to do this. Like, what are your thoughts on that? And where was your mindset when it came to you personally going through that? Um, I would say mentally, I was able to, I did have those thoughts. I won't even lie. I was like, I'm pregnant. I'm going to eat a cookie or a cupcake. Like, I'm pregnant. I'll do what I want. Mm -hmm. But majority of the time I was able to, I don't want to say keep myself in check or on track because I don't really like those phrases, but it, that's basically what it was where I would remind myself that I need to take care of myself to essentially grow a healthy baby at the end of the day. I needed to make sure that things happened, that I was eating whole nutrient dense foods, things like healthy fats, fruits, vegetables, all of that stuff. And once again, just mentally that I felt way better when I was doing those things, especially being pregnant. So you already feel better doing those things when you're not pregnant or postpartum. But while you're pregnant, you already don't feel your best. And okay, some people feel great while they're (laughs) pregnant, but I did not. And I knew that if I was just sitting around not doing those things that made me feel good prior, I would feel even worse. So that was a huge thing. And it almost came down to like, I don't want to make it seem like you have to do X, Y, and Z while you're pregnant because everyone's pregnancy is different. But for me personally, it was like, I, even though I didn't feel like going to the gym, I knew that once I got there and like, I essentially forced myself to get up and go. I would feel better. And that just comes down to, I mean, not like, once again, not so bad, but like mental toughness a little bit, because it's easy to, like you say, like, I'm pregnant, I'm gonna just relax and do this and that, which is great, again, from time to time. But taking care of yourself, moving and doing the things that you don't want to do, like in any instance, even while pregnant, pay off in the long run. And even postpartum, it 100% paid off for me postpartum, I would say. I've only had one pregnancy, but I would like to think that taking care of myself and doing the shit that I didn't want to do while I was pregnant made my postpartum experience a lot better. Yeah. And I I think you've honestly crushed a pregnancy and postpartum. I know that you would probably say differently and you have, um, I mean, each person, of course, is going to judge themselves on a different ruler, but from the outside um, looking in of seeing how you've handled it and even the days that you haven't been able to do those things, like you focused on consistency overall. It wasn't about perfection of now I need to beat myself up because I didn't do this one thing. It was all right. That was the day that it was. I'm going to move forward for this next week. And again, that's been really cool to see you evolve into, especially knowing you as the competitor and knowing that you're going to check all of the boxes to now you have to be okay with the boxes maybe being checked less often, but they are still going to be checked consistently over time. And with you saying like, these things are going to make you feel good. There's a lot of things when it comes to health and fitness that we talk about, whether it's on this podcast, on Instagram, on YouTube, wherever you consume content from physique development. Um, 
um, where you're like, okay, I know this is going to make me feel good. Let's take eating vegetables for an example. A lot of people kind of have the thought of like, I know I should eat vegetables and I know it's likely going to make me feel better, but they still don't eat them. So when it comes to that, and especially when you're pregnant, when you do have kind of that to fall back on of like, I'm, I'm pregnant, like give me some space. And again, I completely agree with that. I cannot right. wait to use that as an excuse <laughs> if we still want to use that term. I want people to dote over me. I want people to do things for me. Right. That'll be incredible to be able to use that. Um, but <laughs> with that, like there's a lot of things that we know we should do or that are going to make us feel better, but it doesn't mean that always is going to make us do it to make us feel better. So with that, what do you talk to your clients about specifically when you are really trying to push forward like, hey, these things are really, really important and you are going to feel better. And maybe they already know that, but they're still having a hard time implementing that. How do you talk to clients when they're going through that? So if I have a client who is, let's say, pregnant and maybe they're really struggling with like nausea in their first trimester or even just with motivation being so tired in general, like they don't want to get to the gym or something like that. I am the coach that will tell you what you need to hear, but also be very understanding and empathetic with how you're feeling. So it always starts with like, I get this. I understand your feelings are valid. But then I throw the, you will 100% thank yourself and you will feel better. And doing this for yourself will also make you feel better. And knowing that like, okay, I got up when I didn't want to. It may just also give you the boost of energy that they need while being pregnant too. Um, So I really do just... I approach it in a very calm and collected way because (laughs) everyone is different once again, but just really nailing in like, okay, if you can't get to the gym four days a week, let's shoot for three or maybe three, like they're still puking their brains out every day. Like, all right, two. And then we'll walk every single day for a certain amount of minutes, or we'll do like some light yoga a couple days a week. It's all about just meeting them in the middle almost because everyone is going to be so different and not everyone has the same mindset or mentality about like, okay, if I just get up, I'll go. And that comes also just with like coaching in general, as you know, like you can only push certain people. Everyone has their own limits. Um, but the biggest thing is just nailing in and meeting them where they're at with like, okay, if we can't do this, let's find something we can do. And then in a, f- like a month from now, when nausea subsides or you have your energy back in your second trimester, let's implement another gym session a week if we need to, or we'll maybe shoot for like a yoga an extra day a week or something like that. That's really how I like to go about it. Yeah. And so what I'm hearing from this is you should have a different ruler to measure yourself on when you are pregnant or postpartum than when you are not pregnant or postpartum. Instead of, again, pushing yourself to the absolute limit, it's not about that. It's about making it work with where you're at. Yeah. And that was honestly such a hard thing for me to accept. Like throughout my pregnancy, I remember I would look at Zach um, and be like, I'm such a failure. Like (laughs) I'm going to throw up if I get up. And then I would be like, I have to go to the gym. Otherwise I'm a pussy, like all this stuff. (laughs) And he would be like, you're literally growing a human. And I was like, I know, but I have to. And then obviously I would some days make myself and I would feel better. But I do remember there were those days where I was like, I will vomit if I take two more steps, especially in that first trimester. And just allowing myself to have that grace, um, like I said, was so difficult coming from the background that I was in, whereas like shit gets done no matter what. That was my mindset. Like you hit your macros, you train your ass off and you tell your coach you checked every box because you don't want to let anyone down and you want to do it. But so letting go of that to the pregnancy, like do what you can, give yourself grace, but also like show up for yourself was huge. (laughs) Yeah. And something I often talk about is within life, there's going to be different stages of what balance or harmony or whatever word you want to use there looks like. So there's times where I'm competing and my balance or harmony within competing is so, so different than when I am in my day-to-day lifestyle. And then I'm sure it is going to be drastically different as well when I am pregnant and recognizing that there's different times that you push and pull within life and not holding your 
yourself to that same standard because, of course, you should have standards for yourself. I'm big on standards for myself and just I have standards for people in my life that I know that they want to reach. And so I want to uphold them to that. But understanding that the standard or the ruler that you're measuring yourself on is going to change when I'm looking at my career growth versus my fitness growth versus my like mental growth and all these different aspects, different pockets of my life have needed different balance or harmony to be able to be successful. And if you just look at it as doing this is the only way to be successful is where people often trip themselves up because they haven't taken a step back and realized like I have a different goal or I have a different purpose right now, or there are different priorities in my life. And um, I'm sure everyone's kind of heard the, the tweet or meme where it's like, try replacing I don't have time with it's not a priority for me. And sometimes people think that's pretty harsh, but I like to look at it as it's nice as a little bit of a self check to understand that people things have a different priority level. It doesn't mean it's bad where within prep, fitness and like hitting my food and everything might be priority number one, where in a different time in my life, that might be three or four on the priority list. That doesn't mean that I'm less dedicated or I care less or it's less important to me. It just means that there's different priorities that come up in life. And it's okay if you have those in a different order at a different time in your life, because life is all about growing and changing. And we We want to really like welcome that instead of like holding on so tightly to something that doesn't serve us anymore. So I absolutely love that you talked about just that grace you need to extend to yourself, as well as recognizing that you, while pregnant and you in your first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, postpartum, all needed a different version of yourself in order to be successful. And I think that's really important to outline and highlight. Yeah, exactly. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. So this is actually going to be part one in a three-part series, being able to talk about some things that you can keep in mind if you are postpartum and going through all of this, where it is very scary. It's a lot of unknown. And especially when it comes to our bodies as women, not only being able to look a certain way, feel a certain way, but then being able to provide that that aspect of not only providing for your child, but providing for your family, but providing for yourself, which Katie and I have had a lot of conversations about of what it looks like for her to show up for herself so that she can do the things that she wants to do. So we're going to go into some different lifestyle factors of things that new moms might struggle with and being able to talk towards that when it comes from a fitness perspective, as well as understanding what that looks like when your goals are to not only look a certain way, but more importantly, to feel a certain way within your body. Yeah. So a few different things that go into play from just a lifestyle standpoint. Um, I always like to just talk on, I don't, Actually, I don't like to highlight struggles a lot, but I think it's important for us to talk about the struggles of just postpartum in general and the struggles of being a new mom. It does have the glamorous side. I will not get you wrong. Like it is the most amazing thing that I've ever done better than any sort of like trophy or anything like that. Um, but there obviously are days where you're like, oh my gosh. And being postpartum, especially as a first time mom, I read all the books. I read all the articles, listened to moms and nothing will truly prepare you for like just the mental aspect of postpartum. Like, you know, things won't be the same. I knew my body would change. I, I knew it would be hard. I knew there was a possibility for postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety. Um, but just the pressure in, of all of that, and then the pressure that you probably, or I guess I should say I applied to myself to just keep pushing through after you have a child um, is absurd. And I will just say that. But once again, everyone has their different takes, but a few things that I felt for sure struggling with immediately postpartum, um, just time management was huge. I was someone who was like strict with the schedule, like sun up, sun down. I was like, I know what I'm doing today. Non-negotiables. Everything's getting done. (laughs) But when you have a new baby, that is not true. And that's okay. So that was a huge struggle for me. Um, And just once again, the 
pressure that I would say I applied to myself. Once again, no one really gave this pressure, but like to bounce back. I hate that term. Yes. But <laughs> we all hate being, that term. <laughs> yeah, I hate that term so much, but everyone will know what I'm saying when I use it. But the pressure to bounce back is so real, regardless of you're in the fitness space or not. Um, but I personally think I had it a lot harder from myself once again, because I was like, I am a coach and I was so like, quote unquote fit. Like I was a competitor. I was used to seeing myself so lean and like shredded all the time, no matter what, like I stayed relatively lean. Even when I was like in my off season, I was super strong and it was so cool to like deadlift 300 pounds and stuff like that. But then postpartum, I was like, that's it. Like I've got to get my shit together. Otherwise I'm not going to be able to like have a career is basically what I told myself, which is not is not true. But it's valid. Like that is how a lot of moms do feel. Like not just you, not just people in the fitness industry. Although I do agree there is like a different standard. And I even talked about it in our mental health episode that recently Alex and I kind of expanded on where our head was at. And I feel that pressure when it comes to being on camera and looking a certain amount of fit because I want that authority within the industry. And I know that there's been times I'm having a conversation with someone and they're like, I would never hire so-and-so. They don't look fit. Or like, if they don't look how I want to look, like, why would I trust what they have to say? And I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh, like, are people thinking that about me? And it's an insane pressure, not even being pregnant, not even to mention like going through that. And then the huge societal pressure for moms to bounce back, not only their bodies, but their life to bounce back. Because there are times where I hear stories that make me so sad of just like people being treated poorly when it comes to the workforce of like, you're not full force back in the work um, when you just grew and birthed a child, uh, like, why aren't you back at work right now? Why aren't you to full capacity um, when child care is a very, very expensive expense, as well as some moms want to stay home with their children or have that desire. And so it's quite the balancing act to navigate through as a female in general, and then all of the other aspects. So I will 100% mirror that and validate you of like our minds do crazy things when we're in a place where it's just like, this is so unknown and I'm feeling it from everyone of how they are showing up. So I, I'm so glad that you mentioned it and are expanding on it because I think a lot of moms hold it inside because they don't want to seem ungrateful. They don't want to seem like they don't love being a mom or they don't love their child. And I think that's ass backwards when it comes down to it of like everyone has hard days, whether they love what they're doing or not. I love my job. That doesn't mean that some days I literally want to walk away and go to an island where no one knows my name. And like we should still give that grace to moms of even if they love being a mom. And like you said, it was the most incredible experience and you wouldn't change it for the world. It doesn't mean we can't talk about the downsides. It doesn't mean we can't talk about the struggle because that's so real. And the less we talk about it, the more we minimize it and just say like, push your feelings feelings away like you're a mom show up as a mom and do that where it's like I'm I'm more than just a mom but now that's my identity so I, I'm all for talking about the struggle because I don't think it's expressed enough like what women go through when it comes to childbirth the trauma of childbirth and then everything post childbirth where you've gotten all this attention all through your pregnancy everyone wants to help and they want to dote over you and then the baby's born and they're like wait where is everyone <laughs> Wait, what? Right. Does no one care anymore? Right. Like, come back, help, <laughs> help me. That is, yeah, that is just, it's so true. And even like you said, the, not everyone has, like, I had a pretty traumatic, I'm once again for myself, not comparing to anyone else, like birth experience. And it took me, like, I remember Fallon's first birthday. I'm like going to get emotional, but like, I cried leading up to it because I was like, that's the year where like, I was giving birth and like shit hit the fan. We were rushed to an OR. Like I was butt ass naked on this table. <laughs> they threw a sheet over me, wheeled me down to an OR and like gas masked me, knocked me <laughs> out and then took a kid out of me. And I woke up and like, I saw Zach holding her and a nurse holding her. And I was like, I remember just crying, but like not really understanding what just happened. I just knew that like my daughter was there 
And I remember instantly like being pissed that I didn't get the holder. Yeah. So like you're like the I just grew this from that, MF. Or why right. am I not holding her? Like, was the last, I was the last one to meet her, and I was like, <laughs> okay, whatever. But anyways, it's fine. <laughs> and then going through all that, like just working through that postpartum too, on top of the pressure, like hey, like bounce back or like thankfully shameless plug for like you and Alex and Austin. Like I did not feel the pressure to like dive back into work whatsoever. I remember I once again put that pressure on myself because of being the human that I am. Mm -hmm. I remember being on a team meeting like two weeks later and you being like, why are you here? <laughs> I was literally like, like, get I was like, off. <laughs> Go do something I know. else. <laughs> right. I know. But like once again, just having that pressure from myself, like not even from you guys, but like, I was like, well, no, like you've got to do this. You've got to do this. You got to do this. And like, you just, you, you fucking don't like, obviously some people have to work in, but like, you don't like the most important thing within those first few months postpartum is just giving yourself that time to just process what the hell just happened. Honestly, like what you have this tiny human, like if you're breastfeeding, that's a whole thing in itself. <laughs> like, I remember being like, I can't even get up anymore because I have this kid on my boob all day long and I'm used to moving all day long. So that was another thing. It's just the pressure to just have a kid and act like things are fine and just go about your day. And not like, complain get, because then you're ungrateful. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. Exactly. Like, oh, you just birthed a kid. So why are you pissed? I'm like, first of all, I'm not mad, but I'm frustrated and I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm like, sleep deprived. I'm <laughs> Right. I'm hungry. I am probably haven't slept in three weeks. And then just to even, I'll use the example of like going to get newborn photos. Like I felt awful that day. I remember it so vaguely. I like got dressed. I remember my C-section like incision still had freaking like stitches in it. And I'm in this dress trying to like smile and I could like barely sit because my core was so weak. And then I was like, but just pull it together. Like we got newborn photos. Just like that's one example of like you obviously you want newborn photos, but like that's just something I was like, don't let her know that like you're in pain. Like don't let her know that like you're really hurting, like you're thankful to be here and all this stuff. And I was like, but hmm, like no. Yeah, you can still be thankful and still have frustrations or still be struggling. And I think that's in life in general, but especially for new moms, like I think that the narrative needs to change that like moms can't complain because it makes them seem ungrateful for their children. When again, there's times where I, I love my dogs. I know it's not the same as a human, but just as an example, it's pretty close. <laughs> it's pretty pretty close. close. I love my dogs <laughs> so much, but my God, if I do not want to wring their neck sometimes, it doesn't mean I love them any less. It just means like they're being difficult and I'm a human being struggling with them being difficult. Um, so I, I'm all for talking about that. And I know you had a few other things that I think are important to talk about when it comes to struggles as a new mom. So um, go ahead. Yeah. So a few other things going off of all of that. Um, I briefly talked about like the like postpartum anxiety, postpartum depression. That stuff is slowly, I feel like, be being more talked about because we're aware of how little people do talk about it. So I feel like it is coming up a little bit more. I thankfully did not go through many stints of like depression. My anxiety has been thousands time worse since having Fallon, but that could just be like the whole stress of like making sure she stays alive. But so that postpartum was insane. Um, and just the guilt that you feel when you do start to leave your baby. I mean, like going to the gym when I was finally allowed to was also, I even still run into this now, like 16 months later, I'm like, well, I feel like she's my responsibility when like technically she is, but like, I am allowed to go to have time to myself. I'm allowed to go take care of myself. But early on postpartum, I remember I didn't want to leave her. I didn't want to leave her with Zach, who was her father. <laughs> and I was like, no, that's fine. I'm just going to stay home. She needs me. But like, she was fine for an hour and a half with him. And then going through the part of just feeling out of place again in like your own body because everything has changed. So along with the pressure of like bouncing back, you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, what is going on? Like you just feel so out of touch with almost the whole being like, you're like, who am I? What is this body that I'm living in? And then especially being someone who was so physique focused, 
I remember bawling my eyes out like for months postpartum because I just, I, once again, this is something that I expected and I didn't have expectations to instantly have like a shredded six pack again, but I still expected, I don't know what, but like, I was not happy with what I looked like. And like, it just, nothing can prepare you for that because no matter how much people talk about it, everyone, like we said before, is going to judge themselves a different way. Look at themselves with like a, probably the worst perspective as in like, you're your worst critic. So I remember I would see someone like, Oh, you look, well, I'll, that's another tangent, but you look so great for just having a baby. And I would like almost cry because I hated how it looked for a while. And, and then also just don't comment on women's bodies. In yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but that was the biggest thing. Um, and a few other things was just like, overstimulation. I had no clue what that was until postpartum when your dogs are fucking wrestling in the living room, your kids crying, the TV's on, someone's talking to you and you don't even know like where to even look. And then you're just ready to yell at everyone because you don't even know like how to handle it and how to manage the overstimulation that you're having when you just like need an adult timeout for a second. And that's like the best way to that's put the it. Best way. And then the <laughs> decision fatigue is so real. And I know this is something that we've covered on the podcast. Well, Alex and Sue have before, but the decision fatigue you get from just a human in general that people probably don't think of, I feel like it just multiplied because now not only are you making decisions for yourself, but you're making decisions for your child. And you're like, what am I going to eat? Well, shit, what are they going to eat? Or like, what am I going to do? But okay, if I'm going to go do this, like, what are they going to do? And oh gosh, just those are a few of the main things. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think that being able to talk about like the aspect of how people can support moms when it comes to being a new mom as well. I do want to make a little bit of a side tangent on that because I know from uh, my friend Des, she spoke and was just like, it really helps for you to text and just say like, I'm thinking of you, like no need to text back. So it's not something else on their plate to do, even though it's you just like being like, oh, I'm thinking of you. I hope you're doing well. Like a lot of times they have of like, oh, this person texted me. I need to respond back. But like, I have a million other things I need need to do um, or like being able to extend grace to your friends or to your loved ones that have just given birth? Like what were some things that either people did or you wish people did that were really helpful that helped you as a new mom or that you wish you had taken advantage of as a new mom now looking back? Um, I'll start with the things that people did that I just truly appreciated. And it would just like you mentioned the simple text I got multiple texts, obviously, when Fallon was born because of the excitement of her being born and things like that, which is great. Um, but the texts that I would get like a few weeks later of people being like, hey, like just checking in on you or like, how are you? And like, not that I didn't want them to ask about Fallon, obviously, but it was just nice to be like, okay, they're like concerned about like my well-being as well. So that was huge. I remember I had people just like sending random things in the mail, which I was like, oh, they thought of me. Like one of my love languages gifts. So <laughs> when I would get like a little gift or like, I remember some clients even like sent me like little care packages because they were moms and they're like, you'll want this DoorDash gift card or things like that. Um, those were huge, but I feel like one thing that I wish I would have gotten more um, is, but it's kind of like the sense of like, I don't live around family really. So, but I wish I could have had like family coming in a little bit more. We had Zach's parents come in when they could, which was great. But I do wish that I was able to be like, hey, mom, like, come on over. Yeah. But that's the only thing. Otherwise, I did feel very cared for postpartum. Um, But that even is something that carries over to now because we don't really have family around mm -hmm. to help us very often or that are able to. Um, so that's been a huge hurdle just throughout Fallon's life, but it's just been an adjustment. And I've talked to you about it before. Like we just don't have reliable childcare. We did it for a long time. Now we have like two days a week of like very consistent, reliable childcare. Um, so those are like I think huge things. And like we said already, childcare is an expense. So some people can't even have childcare and I get that, but just having that help to just come even like sit with her while I do something or I sit with her and like you do the dishes or things like that. Um, 
game changer. <laughs> yeah. And would you say that like there's anything that you wish that you would have vocalized to those close to you to be able to get through the experience a little bit better? Because again, taking back to Dez's experience, she had vocalized like she didn't want to seem like she was struggling. And so she didn't tell a lot of people near her what she needed because she was like, if someone could just come over and like you, the example of just do the dishes for me, like that would be so helpful. Or or like, can you, like talking to her husband, can you help with this while I go and do this? She felt like she, not that she couldn't, but it was hard to vocalize those things. So would you say that you wish that there were things that you could vocalize or you would now like looking back of like, oh, next time around, I will be sure to be like, go and do this. <laughs> yeah. And that was kind of like the dishes. Like I don't just, that's just an example, but I think I'm glad that you brought that up because I think I was the same way. And that's why it was probably so hard for me to answer that question because I remember like, once again, being like, in pain, I was supposed to lay in bed for like four weeks. And I was like, well, no, I got to do the dishes or like, I got to do X, Y, and Z. And I remember Zach would literally be like, sit down. I'm like, no, I'm fine. And like, even he is someone who I can tell anything to, and he will support me. But even him, I didn't want him to know that like, I was struggling some days. And so that's just one of the things I'd be like, hey, I need to just lay here for like three more days <laughs> and then I'll try to do some stuff because I I just didn't ask. And that's just it. Like looking back, I didn't ask for anything. I mean, I'm glad and I'm very thankful for his parents stopping by when they did. Um, but I, I didn't ask for them to. So they just kind of came when they could. Um, so that's definitely something that I would change moving forward. I didn't ask for like anyone to come drop off any food or things like that. But I, I mean, I should have, I wish I would have. And when we have our next child, whenever that may be, <laughs> God willing, um, I will 100% have like a freaking schedule yes. of times when I'd be like, this is everything out. that you can do for me. Thank you. <laughs> Copy and paste it. Anyone right. that's like, what can I do yeah. to help? You're like, here's a list. Thank <laughs> you. Right. Roll it out. <laughs> like, here you go. I have all these things because yeah, like you, I love that you brought that up because I was definitely just now realizing <laughs> doing the same thing. I just, and it's not that you like look weak, but in my mind, once again, being someone who just, I've got it all like shoulders back, take it to the chest. Like, let's just fucking do it. I was like, no, I'm good. Like I can do this. I'm fine. But in the reality, you are not fine. <laughs> you need help. And that's okay. And that yeah. like, you and I are very similar in that of like, I want to have it all together. And I want to show that I can do it. And not always that I feel weak when someone does something for me, but more of like, I feel bad when someone does stuff for me, I'm kind of like, no, like, I'll just do it. Like, I'd rather take the hit than you. Like, you go and do something fun with your life or right. like, <laughs> you go have drinks with yeah. your friends. I will do, I'll stay up till I'll, 10 I'll and do what I need to do. do this. But the thing that like, I've been trying to learn myself, it's still a work in progress. But like when people offer, most of the time they mean it and they're willing to do it. Like, hopefully people aren't just offering and not willing to do it. Isn't but that crazy? <laughs> it's a it's crazy a concept. Scenario. When someone offers, <laughs> to help you, they often want to help you. And so being able to do that, even in the smallest experience of like our neighbor was like, I'll wash your dogs anytime. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I could never ask you to do that. And she's like, I'm volunteering. And I was like, I mean, are you sure? Like, even though I knew I wanted it done and all this, I feel this guilt when it's like this person is offering to help, like just accept the help. Um, so I think that's important to note because it's hard to accept help sometimes, even though it's like, oh, yeah, you're struggling. Someone's offering to help you. That should be easy. It's like, eh, mm, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Even now, I'm just like, no, shut up. I've got it. Like, <laughs> in reality, but then in my head, I'm like, God, I wish someone would help me. But then I'm like, no, don't help me. I've got and it. And then so slightly like, resentful where you're like, I'm getting no right. help here. Right. Zach will be like, what do you need me to do? I'm like, nothing. I've, I've got it. And then like 20 minutes later, I'm like, like staring yeah. at him. You're like, why didn't you help? Work. And you're like, you told me you didn't need me to. <laughs> exactly. But 
I'm working on it too. So we will work on this together. Exactly. Hey guys, if you're listening to this and learning a lot, I absolutely love to hear it, but maybe you feel like you can't apply it perfectly. No worries. We got an app for that. Go ahead and check the show notes or the description box, and there will be a link to go and check out the Physique Development Training Club. This is an app that is going to give you exactly what you need to progress within training with three, four, and five day splits, as well as home and gym options complete with a timer in there, videos to the training, and everything else you need to be successful. So I can't wait to hear how much you love it. Um, so with that, you had talked about overcoming some of those struggles. One of it was asking for help and trusting those that offer help. Um, but, but what else did that look like when it comes to how you were able to get through it or how clients have seen a lot of success? Um, so just communication. Once again, I was someone who would just not keep everything in, but kind of like if it bothered me, I would just work through it maybe, or I would just be like, eh, whatever, like I'll just do whatever I need to do. Um, but communication has something, has been something that is huge now for me. Um, whereas in the past I would just be like, oh, it's fine. Or like, no, I'll be fine. Or like, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> when in reality, I'm fine. not fine. Fire. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We've even had some conversations in the last few months, like as like an employee and you being like a boss where I'm just like, hey, I'm just letting you know, like I am kind of struggling. And that's something for me that is very hard to do, um, which is it is a work in progress. And I'm honestly really proud of how much better I have gotten at it. Um, but that's something that has been a total game changer because looking immediately postpartum to like we said, like I wouldn't tell anyone. And now I'm like, okay, Katie, like you at least need to like let someone know that like you're not in a good spot. So that was huge. And then even my clients who are postpartum, I have a few in mind right now on my roster who are just amazing. And they're obviously like crushing it, like working, working out, like prioritizing themselves, their kid, like being super moms. And they'll still come to me and they're checking sometimes and be like, well, I don't think that I'm making enough progress or like, I'm really not proud of this week because X, Y, and Z happened. Or I just feel like I could be doing better. And I will be like, hang on, <laughs> let's, let's, let's back up a little bit. Like you are doing amazing just because everything didn't go exactly to plan. Or maybe you didn't hit all your training or you didn't do your core work a couple of days. Like, but your kid was sick. So like, let's just flip the script here. Mm -hmm. And like we said, like priorities are different now. So being postpartum and just communicating with my clients openly about the struggles postpartum that are allowed to take like the front seat to their fitness goals, um, I think has been helpful with a lot of my clients in reaching their goals. And they'll even say like, I'm so glad that you just understand what is I'm going through because I mentally like felt really bad about X, Y, and Z, but it was nice and like very reassuring for you to say like, it's okay, basically, and just keep moving forward. Or then like, I'm that second eye for them to remind them that like, they are making progress. They are making changes. They are getting stronger because like we said, you're your own worst critic. So going through your own postpartum experience, kind of just seeing yourself every day, you will feel like you never look good enough, whether you're postpartum or not in most yes. cases. <laughs> and you will feel like you always need to make a change or do something better. So it's always good to just communicate with that openly through clients um, and make sure that they have their head on straight. That's my job as your coach to keep you pushing forward. Um, and then it just talking about like the feelings of maybe a lot of things that come up or like guilt when leaving their kid to go to the gym. I mean, they'll be like, well, I just felt really bad. So I just rushed my workout. And so once again, those feelings are so valid and I've been there too, but you also have to take care of yourself to show up as the best mom that you can. Because like I've said repeatedly already, like if you're not in a good spot, you cannot come home and take care of your child in the best way that they need you to, because you're not all there. Like mentally, you are just not all there. And that's just part of it. So giving yourself a little bit of a break, working through the mom guilt that comes along with postpartum, whether it be working or just leaving them at daycare to go run errands. I mean, it is huge. So I would say the biggest thing in overcoming all of those struggles is just communication across the board is huge. <laughs>
Yeah. And hiring a coach. I mean, I say this for my clients in general is like we've made the mistake so that you don't have to. And even more so like outside of just general fitness, which I obviously think having a coach is so beneficial. I've had numerous coaches myself as well as I am a coach. Um, But especially postpartum, I cannot tell you how little information doctors share with women Mm -hmm. for postpartum. And I don't want to get into a whole (laughs) tangent about that. Yeah, you will hear some explicitives come out of me that you probably will not want to hear of how you might yes of how frustrating it is because I have clients that like even for example, I'll use a very real life example. I have a handful of clients that um like through their postpartum experience or when they got pregnant, they uh, left working with me just to be able to have some space to navigate through what they were going through. And then I had some of them message me like one or two weeks postpartum and be like, hey, I need to get back in shape. I need to do X, Y, and Z. Like what workouts can I be doing or what what is this? And I'm like, you're not supposed to work out for six weeks. Like you're not supposed to do not not that you're not supposed to do anything, but like you're not supposed to do anything for six weeks. And they're like, wait, really? And I'm like, oh my gosh, are doctors not telling you this? Are they not under explaining to you? Like your organs are all in a different spot and you also just like moved everything around and like birth, whether it is a vaginal birth or a C-section is a trauma. Like it is a trauma to your body. And so going through a trauma and then having all these things that haven't been expressed to you about what to do, that is such a scary spot to be in. Plus, like you said, the anxiety of like, how do I make these decisions for myself and for this human that I now need to make sure doesn't grow up to be a serial killer and isn't like the worst person ever. Like, how do I make all these decisions? I'm sleep deprived. I have no idea. Do I read every website that someone's made about parenting? What if they're all wrong? Like, all these thoughts are going through your head and knowing that you have someone that's been there that also has the certification and knows what you're going through and knows where you want to get to help you guide you there. Exactly what Katie said of like, she's able to kind of give affirmation and permission to clients to talk through what they're experiencing, how she experienced it, as well as her actual like knowledge and certifications. It's not just all about like, well, this is what I experienced. So this is how I'm going to share information to you. That's part of it. But it's also of like, she has the knowledge to guide you. She's taken time to learn about what happens to your body during pregnancy, what happens to your body after you're pregnant. What do you need to be aware of? What things in your body have changed? Like some of you guys might not know that when you're pregnant, you have something called relax and that increases and you become even more flexible. You can injure yourself and then your arteries are going to... um your like <laughs> your blood volume like. your sh- like stroke volume your blood volume is going to increase there's all these huge changes that are happening within your body and Like you're not being told about it. And so being able to have someone that can tell you about like, hey, what you're feeling right now is very normal for someone in your position. And like, this is how long it's going to take for these things to get back in line. This is what is going to be best for your body. Because again, six weeks, you need to wait at least six weeks to start doing any kind of gym movement type of thing. Like you are doing the absolute bare minimum when it comes to like physical fitness um, when you're in that time and being able to have someone that understands so that you're not injuring yourself, you are able to quote bounce back. And if you're not watching this on YouTube, I did that with a massive eye roll. Um, But (laughs) you're able to experience these things and know that someone has your back. Like I'm someone who strongly believes there's not enough information for women postpartum from doctors and there's not enough when it comes to your postpartum visits to really tell you what you need to do or what that looks like. And so having an expert like someone like Katie, as well as on staff, we also have myself as perinatal certified and Charlotte is perinatal certified. So like we are here for you mamas and we want you to know like this stuff is normal and we want to teach you about it and help you understand so you can stop beating yourself up and you can stop like wishing things were different when you'll have some knowledge. Like that's what physique development is all about, train, educate, and empower. And we want to educate you on your body postpartum or 
pregnant, like perinatal as a whole. We want to educate you, be able to train, of course, when we get to that point and empower you to understand like how your body works and why these things are happening because there's so much more peace. And I'm sure Katie can speak to this of like, there's so much more peace now knowing more about perinatal. Like, do you feel extreme peace now with all of the knowledge that you have gathered when it comes to perinatal? For sure. One thousand percent. I am so glad that I took it upon myself to go through all of the courses that I did. I did them like as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I was like, perfect. I need to learn what the hell is going on, what to expect. I need to learn how to train. I need to learn everything because obviously this is a whole new chapter for me. And then using that stuff while I was pregnant, like for example, I remember one time during pregnancy, I was walking on the treadmill at the gym. I sneezed and peed my pants. And if you follow me and if you know, I am a huge believer and I tell everyone it is not normal to pee your pants when you sneeze. And I remember it happened once and I knew already because of the knowledge and the courses and things like that, that like, I wasn't supposed to pee my pants when I sneezed. <laughs> and that was a sign that my pelvic floor was getting weaker, which is normal during pregnancy, of course, because you're growing a human, all the pressure on your organs pushing down. But ever since that moment, I was like, not happening again. And I made it a non-negotiable for myself literally daily, either even if it was just for five minutes a day to do some pelvic floor work or TVA work throughout my pregnancy. And then that transpired also postpartum. So that's just one example of if I wouldn't have educated myself on that, which I'm sure I would have figured it out somehow, but the doctors weren't going to tell me that. Like they would probably just laugh like, oh yeah, <laughs> like it's fine. Everyone does it. It's normal to pee yourself after you're pregnant. Like that just happened. When I hear women that are like years postpartum and they're like, I still pee a little when I sneeze, but like that just, uh -huh. that's what happens when you have babies. And I'm like, no. oh gosh, no, that's not what's supposed to happen. Right. And that's just one thing that like, I remember I had a, probably a 20 minute, six week checkup postpartum. And my doctor looked at me took my stitches out and was like, okay, like just start walking a little bit and then you're good to exercise. And I remember leaving that being like, and this is why, like, this is why women just jump back into things and either don't heal their core right, have ab separation for the rest of their life that might get worse the rest of their life. Or that's why they're peeing their pants until their kids are like 18 and then they just don't even talk about it anymore. Like, or they don't have a milk just, supply or whatever it right. may be because they don't know they need to eat more when they're breastfeeding or like what happens when you're not drinking enough water or having movement to your milk supply. Like it, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a whole thing. Perfect. You can tell we're pretty passionate yeah. about it. Right. We're getting pretty fired up. I'm starting to sweat a little bit because I'm getting pissed. <laughs> Did you pee your pants? That's normal. <laughs> Thankfully, no. No, I'm just kidding. It's that core work. Um, but then just working through all of that postpartum with clients and them – being a lot of clients have already had a little bit of knowledge that I've recently been working with because they've either followed me, followed physique development as a whole, um, and they know a little bit of like what to expect, but obviously they're coming to me to guide them in the right direction. And depending on how soon we work together, I always, like Sue said, make it very important to make sure that they are not like going into the gym six or eight weeks postpartum and just putting 135 on a barbell on their back and squatting it. Um, was one thing I always like to say is just like focus on things that you can add right now, things that you can control, and then we will build off of that. So being early postpartum, I like to just have moms, especially breastfeeding, like we said, eating enough food. If they want to track their macros, that's fine. It is not something that I, as a coach or as a human, fully expect a mom who just birthed a child <laughs> to do. I just don't. Um, but I do expect you to make eating a priority. Mm -hmm. So what I like to Love do is that. maybe just set a very vague calorie gold um, and kind of guide them like, okay, make sure you're getting healthy fats, nutrient dense food. But at the end of the day, like calories are important. So if there's going to be days where you feel like you have no time to eat those first few weeks and you're going to door dash something and it's probably just going to be loaded with calories that are might be shit calories and some protein. But you know what? It's one day. I'd rather you do that than not, not eat at yeah. all. Right. So, I mean, that's just once again, going back to like the balancing act of like, this is a chapter of your postpartum journey. So if you need to just order something to get in calories so you don't lose your milk supply, please do it. Um, and then drinking a lot of water or like coconut water and like just the healthy fats to help with hormones and regulating those postpartum. There are just so many things that I just 
kind of vaguely lay out for them postpartum. And I kind of see where it takes them because everyone's going to work at a different pace here. So if they can just jump in and implement everything, great. Like that's awesome. But if they can't, I like to just set obviously small goals each week with like, okay, well, we focused on water last week. This week, let's really focus on like hitting our protein and fat goal. Or maybe we're killing that. Like now next week, maybe let's just walk and get some sunlight and some core breathing in this week. So those are the things that I really like to focus on in those early weeks postpartum to not fully overwhelm the mom because like I said, she's probably already overwhelmed enough. I don't want to swing in there and expect her to check off all of these things that are just unrealistic postpartum. Yeah, and that, that's an important uh, distinction to make because someone might feel either listening to this or maybe they have their own thought process towards like, if I hire a coach, that's so much more I have to do. I have to check in. I have to check all these boxes and all of this. And uh, that's so much. I'm too overwhelmed. But it can honestly help with the overwhelm because like Katie said, she's not going to have this super high expectation for you because she's been there. She knows some days, a lot of days, you're not going to get your hair washed. You're not going to be able to right. change your clothes maybe and you got milk stains on you and burped up and all that kind of stuff all happening and that just happens but it's about being one percent better or taking that next step and so it really helps to have that guidance and it really helps to have that understanding and someone that can break it down so it doesn't have to be overwhelming and with Katie saying like she likes to focus on what can add rather than take away when we think about or some people when they think about pregnancy they might think of all the things they can't do or postpartum, all the things they can't do. And so flipping the script and thinking, all right, what do, can I add to my life and what is going to be additive to my life is a really positive mindset shift because it is like your mindset is very important and the way you phrase things, the way that you structure how you phrase things um, and view them is going to be important to your success as a whole so that you are able to, again, keep showing up for yourself and not feeling like extreme guilt for doing doing something because you're viewing it as taking away instead of adding to your life. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. Just you just don't need to add more guilt feelings or just even negative thoughts at all to yourself. Just be able to like Sue said get 1% better each day, focus on something that is reachable, a goal that is attainable and then roll with it and then we'll adjust and find something else. <laughs> Yeah. So what are a few of the other lifestyle additions that you like to make? Because in the next episodes, we are going to be going over like specific nutrition and training aspects. So this is definitely not the last that you'll hear of Katie and I. Um, but what other lifestyle additions are really helpful for either yourself or your clients postpartum? Um, so a few other things I'm piggybacking off of all of that that I like to add is when they're feeling up and ready and being mindful, that is so important. I put in a very manageable or attainable step goal, depending on their lifestyle prior, what they were doing pregnancy. For someone like me, I used to get like 10,000 steps a day easy because I was just constantly going. I just, once again, was convinced that I had to do all of the things, no matter what, up until I gave birth, I was shooting for 10,000 steps a day, which is fine. But postpartum, like that's not happening. Mm -hmm. It's just not, especially those first six, six weeks. So once I was able to even like go on walks, I just was like, okay, get 3000 steps, which is once again, so low, but for just I was so sedentary. And when I was finally ready to make that jump, that was a goal and I needed something. So I would just walk for like 10 minutes a day with the stroller. And then I'd be like, okay, now 4,000 steps, which is just about 10 extra minutes. Okay, now 5,000 steps. So that's something I really like to implement. Um, and then where you can, finding a good sleep routine. So obviously you're going to wake up throughout the night. You might not sleep four hours straight, but if you can at least set that time aside before bed to do something to kind of allow yourself to decompress throughout the day after a long day of momming. God knows what, <laughs> being a mom. It is so important. I mean, and like I said, your kid is probably going to wake up in three hours. But if you take that time for yourself to like do your skincare, lay in bed and read a book, or even if you're just laying there in silence, like give yourself that time without your phone, by yourself, with your spouse, whatever it may be, and set that routine for yourself. Um, so that way you can do that. And then one other thing that I found to be something that I personally slacked on a lot um, is making time with your spouse a priority. So that was something that Zach and I, we didn't, I don't want to say struggle, but we're both just 
very like go, go, go people. He works a lot. I like to work a lot. It's just our nature, which is why we work so well together. But we did not prioritize our relationship. We probably didn't go on a date postpartum until Fallon was like six months old. Um, and a lot of that being like work schedule, but also I was just like, well, no, we can't, we can't, or like we shouldn't or X, Y, and Z, but making the time to spend with your spouse one-on-one and continuing to date them still, even after having a kid is huge. I mean, there's still times where like, we don't go out on like date nights as much as we should probably, but we prioritize time each night to hang out and spend like an hour, whether that's like on the couch watching TV or like in the backyard, just hanging out or talking on the patio or whatever it may be. Um, we spend that time together. And then whether he stays up later or playing Xbox, watching football, (laughs) I go to bed. It doesn't matter. We really prioritize that time together now. And I wish we would have done that as soon as possible postpartum Mm -hmm. because your relationship, I mean, everything is going, everything is going differently. I mean, your role is changing. Being a dad, their role is still changing a little bit. And you can't discredit that they have to make adjustments too. Like they're trying to emotionally take on the brunt of what you're feeling as a mom. They're trying to figure out how they can even help you because once again, moms just by default are the default parent. And so sometimes I know that seeing Zach would kind of make me upset in a way and a little bit resentful, but he didn't know how to help. And then like we said already, I wouldn't ask (laughs) for help. So being able to make sure that your spouse is still also a priority, whether that be an hour a day, 30 minutes a day, or like 10 minutes before they leave for work um, is something that I do wish is talked about way more because I think that is so important just for to have the support system that you truly need as well. Yeah. And being able to recognize, like we've talked about, you're more than just a mom. You're wearing more hats than that. And if you don't make that time, then you can first easily become just um, roommates who have a child together. Like that's something really easy, whether you have kids or not. But married couples all the time become roommates um, just because like they don't put in that effort. But when it comes to having a child, like you deserve to have adult time because you're all day on child time, which is so admirable and incredible. But you also need to be an adult and you need to be able to have that time with your spouse. And it doesn't always have to be some big elaborate date night. Like you said, sometimes that's just not doable. But Alex and I have a rule of like, we're not going to sit and watch TV or like he's not going to go and game or something like that if we hadn't had like at least 30 minutes together to just like talk and spend time together. So there will be times where we're like yesterday, we were running in separate directions the whole day. We barely saw each other the whole day and we get back and he was doing something on his phone or he was watching a clip from something and I was just kind of sitting there in silence and he like looks up and he's like, oh, I'm sorry. And like puts away his phone, turns it down. We go out to the patio and just spend like 30 or 40 minutes together talking, learning about the person's day, seeing what they either have on the docket for the next day, growing within our relationship, being vulnerable, whatever it may be. And it's grown our personal relationship so, so much of like literally a minimum of 30 minutes a night is what we aim for of like being able to have conversation without screens. And like we won't watch a TV show oftentimes if we haven't had that time together to just sit and talk. And I'm definitely not trying to tell other people how to live their life. Each relationship looks different. And I think we've made enough disclaimers (laughs) through this whole thing that like you get that I'm not just saying you should do what I do, but more of like, this is an example of how you can show up for your spouse because we get lost again, not having children, but like we get lost and like we wear hats of like, he's my coach. And then we're also business owners together. Like we're like, we have to work work together in a business sense and we get lost in talking about business or talking about whatever it may be. And it's like, no, 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 no. We're also a couple. And like that needs to be at the core because it's so easy for someone to fall out of touch or feel unloved or unheard or unlistened to if you don't just take that time. And I can promise you like you have 30 minutes in a day to be able to like set aside for like the person that you've promised forever for. So being able to have that is so important. And I love that you added that to the list because that often goes overlooked. It's just about the the child. It's about that, which is so important. But 
other things are also (laughs) important. And being able to take that time is so huge. And I'm sure that you can say, since you have made it more of a priority, you guys not only parent stronger together, but you feel like more of a unit instead of just, like I said, roommates kind of like going through their lives together. Yeah. And that's exactly it because you fall, like you said, you fall into that just day-to-day bustle. I mean, you're going, you're doing your shit, you're working. And I just am home more. So Fallon's with me more. Fallon's my daughter. But (laughs) if you didn't catch that throughout this whole thing, Fallon is the daughter. Fallon is my daughter. (laughs) Um, She's with me probably 80% of the time besides the like 10 hours a week, she's at childcare. So it just is so easy to take it all on. And then not even like we already said before, not ask for help, not expect anything and whatever. But since we've kind of sat down months back and been like, okay, what do we need to do so that I am not an asshole at the end of the day <laughs> to you? Are you doing things that you don't even know that like I expect? So just being able to work as a team and come together and show up best for Fallon because now she sees her parents like loving each other which so special like we always loved each other but like we're more like happy or like we're hugging in front of her like things like that whereas if you're just bypassing each other you your kid is just like oh mom and dad are just like working and living together. And that was something that I think Zach and I both were like, we want her to know like how much mom and dad not just love her, but love each other too. And it helped me so much postpartum. And I know it helped Zach feel more involved in things as well. Um, So yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it truly is so sweet at the last staff party that we had seeing Zach with Fallon. Like, I don't want to say that and be like, it wasn't sweet seeing you because I feel like I know what like saying, husbands no. or like fathers when they like do right. something for their child everyone's like oh my gosh I can't believe he changed a diaper and it's like what do you think <laughs> okay. I've been doing this whole time changing diapers right. like it's my freaking job um so I don't want it to come across that way but it was so special to see you guys as a like parental unit together like caring for Fallon and like fawning over her and I could tell that like he understood his position changed too it wasn't just Katie gave birth and now we have a child it's like now I'm a father and I have to show up for Katie and I have to show up for Fallon and it was so special to see that because I assumed that it was likely a struggle postpartum um, because just like that's been what I've seen with a lot of couples and to see you guys like come together as one was so special and just melted my heart so it makes me so happy that you've made that a priority Um, and I am sure that Fallon can see that her parents love each other and Zach is such a soft (laughs) for her and that's exactly how Alex is going to be wrapped around a little finger being the biggest (laughs) soft yeah (laughs) yeah it's in play. Like, I am shocking, not shockingly, because we all knew that Zach would be that way, but I am the disciplinary. And it, like, it be. sucks. It sucks because Zach's the fun yeah. one. Like, Zach gets home from work and she's like, Bless. She's like, hell yeah, like, dad's, dad's home. home. Right. Like, yeah. Hey. Like, this morning, Zach was home later than usual and left when we left for daycare. Normally, he's gone by like 6 30, and it's just her nine in the morning, and we have a routine, but he was home, which is great, but it also just like, fucked everything up. like like why you thought he was on one now i'm sitting here right. having to be mean she to everyone <laughs> right she wouldn't get dressed like she just wanted to wrestle and i'm like dude come on we've got to go <laughs> but yeah it's great it's, it's great. great i love you but you know we got to schedule <laughs> um well i think that this was an incredible podcast i'm so excited for the next two parts and just to summarize a few of the things that we talked about here is it is okay to struggle and it is okay to be frustrated and to um complain. Let's use that word. It doesn't mean that you're ungrateful for your child or ungrateful for the experience of being pregnant or any of that. And your struggles are very valid when it comes to being a mom. But in order to overcome those struggles, it is extremely helpful and beneficial to ask for help, as well as trusting those who are going to offer help to you, communicating those needs. People can't read your mind, as well as like so strongly showing up for yourself and ways that you can do that is focusing on what you can add to your life as well as being able to focus on getting steps in, focusing on sleep, stress management, as well as your relationship with your significant other and understanding that your body has changed and your physiology has changed and it is going to take some time to feel quote normal, but it's likely going to be a new normal that you have now established. It's not going to be same old, same 
same old. It's a new normal. And being able to understand that different parts in your life require a different version of you. And so you have to show up as a different version. So you cannot judge yourself as that past version. Um, So those are some lifestyle factors that we really wanted to go over. But we're going to talk more in depth when it comes to nutrition and training in the following episodes. Um, And then Katie, if you have anything else to say, then I'll pass it over to you. I just am so glad I was here. Love this conversation. And I'm so excited to talk to all of you guys about training and nutrition postpartum because there's so much to go over yes. and there's so much to learn and I cannot wait to share with you. Yes. And if you're not already following Coach Katie on Instagram, <laughs> you're messing out. Let I me do. tell you. Her reels <laughs> got me cackling. I, I would be like her number one. If they came out with like an Instagram wrapped at the end of the year, it would be like the person who viewed your reels the most or like the most times was Sue. Um, but she makes great educational content as well as just like relatable content that I'm just like, I, I literally like save some of them. And I'm just like, I know I'm going to experience this as a mom. And I'm just going to like save it in a little folder so that when I am, I can come back and be like, okay, we're good to go. Um, or thank you for this little <laughs> reminder that I needed to hear. So she will be there to give you the tough love, give you the reminders that you need to hear, but also to make you laugh. So go follow Katie on Instagram. Her Instagram will be linked in the show notes or the description box. And if you're a new mom or you're pregnant um, or planning to become pregnant and listening to this and you're like, I'm already sold. I need Katie as my coach. Like, girl, me too. So go ahead. And her inquiry link is going to be below. Um, and she is so ready to help you navigate what it is to be a mom um, and to make sure that your health is in the best spot. And I know she mentioned she knew she wasn't going to get six pack abs in like two weeks. But I will say, my gosh, <laughs> is she freaking impressive when it comes to her core. And even though it's tedious and boring work to do, she does it and she checks the boxes that need to be checked for this phase of her life and being able to show up for herself and how she needs to view herself, which is very powerful to even just experience, not alone to have that being coached, um, you being coached through that. So that inquiry link will be below, but we'll see you in the next two episodes.